Good evening, viewers. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Matthias Aufiku, news editor of the Namibian Sun. Welcome to the evening review show. Let's have a look at today's Namibian Sun newspaper. Tonight we're joined in studio by Mr. Hank Much, the President of the Republican Party. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, good to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's, it's been a while. How have you been? Oh, well. I'm well. I'm running around. There's um, quite a lot of things happening in the country and we're trying to make sense of it all. Mm -hmm. But um, fortunately, we had very good rain, so there's there's one aspect where we can be where we can be very happy. Yeah, a lot of things happening in the country, indeed. Sounds like nostalgia. You missed the political scene? No. <laughs> <coughs> but if you say I'm, whether I missed the political scene, I always said I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. I'm just a patriotic Namibian who tried to make some sort of a contribution to see if we can better the lives of our people. Uh, and it's also the reason why I don't want to be seen as a politician because I say politicians are, politicians are not honest, mm -hmm. they're honest. <laughs> it seems to me it became more clear every day. No, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a challenging time for all of us mm -hmm. uh, currently in, in, in Namibia. And um, I really hope that sanity will prevail, especially now, because there are some serious choices that have to be made and actions that have to be taken to make sure that uh, that we don't uh, end up as a banana republic. Mm -hmm. um, we are basically going there quickly if we don't stop this rot and the rots. There's not only a fish rot, diamond rot, there's a lot of rots as we know. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think uh, if even there may be a needed leadership, it's now to get us out of this mess. Yeah, you, you, you sound very worried. Is the situation that dire in the country? You know, <clears throat> what, what is it all about? Uh, in the end, it is to create a, um, situation in the country where the grassroots level will be well off. Mm -hmm. I always said, you know, if it's going well with the grassroots, it will go well with the country because it means that you are spending your money wisely. You, you support the areas where support is needed most. <clears throat> and we, we just see the, the unemployment rate. We see the problems we have with our health services. We see the problems we have with our education service, uh, education department and and then most of all the corruption um, and the people are suffering. Our people are suffering as never before and, and it is, it is uh, shocking to see that nothing has been done about it. All we see is more Range Rovers and Bentleys and Jaguars driving around in town um, without any, well, we know where the money comes from. Yeah. Uh, the corruption in Namibia, I think it's at a level now where it's never been before. Mm -hmm. It's as if people don't even worry that uh, they are per perceived to be corrupt or involved in corrupt dealings. 
But that, that is something that, that we can do something about. The problem is that I think we have spent so much money on, if I can call it white elephants, um, unnecessary projects like all the buildings that the government has built, head mm -hmm. offices for basically every ministry. <clears throat> they, um, the Necrotal Dam, I mean, if you, if, you, if you look at that, it's a beautiful dam. I was there two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely beautiful. But was it necessary? I mean, to say that we want to build a dam in the south to develop the south, they don't even now know, and the dam is full, they don't know what to do with the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no plan. They spent, I guess, around about six, seven billion dollars on it. Instead of having divided that amount, if they would have done it in the beginning and divided it up and, and say, give Ketman's whip one billion <clears throat> and put uh, companies in place to develop or to create development projects for mm -hmm. the people of Ketman's whip and so with all the other towns in the south. Yeah. But to come and say that you built a Nekital Dam for that amount and then you say it's developing the south, it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but we've done it. It's been done and it cost us a lot of money. And that's not only the Nekital Dam. What if, if you look at the oil storage facilities in, in Wolfish Bay, what happened to that? I mean, we know that there was a lot of corruption. We know the names of the people who were involved. Uh, probably it's lying with the Anti-Corruption Commission, but the North, I mean, we look at uh, the Kavango region. I guess it's supposed to be the second richest region in the country. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's the second poorest because there's no development. And yeah. we talk about food security. They are lying thousands of hectares of land that can be irrigated. We can export. <coughs> we can be self-reliant and we can export all the food to neighboring countries. Uh, there's such a lot that can be done. If you look at the Agribus Dev debacle and, uh, and, and their green schemes, that is a disaster. It's mm -hmm. been a disaster f for 10 years, but nobody's doing anything about it. Yeah. So if, if I may interject, um, um, there's always been this feeling that politicians tend to always just come out and express the real situation once they're out of the system. No, I've been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for a long time. Um, you're not always reported. Uh, mm -hmm. But no, this is, this is all I'm talking about. The problem is you, all, you, you, you also don't want to, to, to be negative all the time and to criticize. You know, uh, I always said if, if uh, one can criticize in a manner where it can contribute to, 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 to do things better. But I think we all got to the point where we realized, you know, that especially from the, in the opposition party and especially under the current president, um, he doesn't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, I was never invited, not that I thought I should have been, but invited to, to speak with him and to discuss issues uh, of national concern. I had that opportunity with the previous uh, president, Pwamba. Mm -hmm. Not that anything happened, <clears throat> but at least, I mean, you could say things and, and put it where it's supposed to be and hope that you yeah. do something about mm -hmm. it. And but your party was one of the parties that actually threw their weight behind the current president. Behind? Behind the current president. Yeah, sure. I mean, but a lot of people did that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see the percentage of votes that he got, what, is, what was it? Uh, 87%. 87%. Percent. So what do you think has changed over time? It's difficult to say. I think he's not serious. Um, and I think the internal squabbles in Swapu uh, may have played a role. Um, it's difficult to say. I, I, just, I, just, uh, I just think that he uh, disappointed Namibia. Not only some people. I think mm -hmm. he disappointed Namibia. It's, it's hard for me to say that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm not only the only one saying that. It's all yeah. over the place. Everybody knows that now. Um, there's no, there's no discipline. There's, especially if you come to, uh, to the financial sector and the money that Namibia is spending. The fact that we allow the Chinese to come in to Namibia in their thousands, taking over the jobs that our people can do. Um, the questions still remain whether they pay taxes, whether they pay uh, VAT, and whether they are bank accounts. Um, and where does their money go and all that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are practical stuff that, that something can, somebody can do something. And I think the president is the best one to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if he see that 
things are not going the right way, then he must interfere. Mm -hmm. And he can, he can hire and fire his ministers, but it seemed that they are playing musical chairs. You know, the one minister get this ministry, and one, one actually get the impression that, that they are in place where they can corrupt <laughs> and, 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 and get as much money as possible. And when they have eaten enough, then they move to the next, mm -hmm. to the next ministry. I mean, it is not what I'm saying. This is what the people on the ground what they are saying, and mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I know what the people are saying. I'm on the ground, I speak to them, whether it's from the Caprivi Kabango right down to the south, to the east, to the west. Mm -hmm. And this is what the people are saying, but nobody <coughs> come up and say, but you're not correct. I mean, your, your assumption of what's happening in the country is not correct. Uh, this and this and this and this. But they can't do it because they know it's true. So if, if we are so convinced that the corruption you speak of is so rampant, and like you said earlier on, we know the names, who it is. Why is no citizenship action taking place in terms of lodging cases and so on? I think... But is it enough? I is the rhetoric enough? <coughs> I think a lot of cases have been reported to the Anti-Corruption Commission. This is one of our problems. Um, <coughs> and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not uh, somebody that beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to. Um, but I think the Anti-Corruption Commission, as is most of the ministers, are incompetent. Uh, I don't think the Anti-Corruption Commission... Uh, let, let us start and, and be fair and say that they should get a much bigger budget, uh, part of the budget, that they could appoint uh, investigative officers, and, because I don't think they really have it. Mm -hmm. But when they had it, they got rid of them. But I think, I think, uh, and, and again, I mean, uh, you, you cannot, you cannot hide stuff nowhere. Namibia is too, too small for that. And I had uh, a number of occasions where people came to me from the Anti-Corruption Commission to tell me what's going on there. And uh, it, it, it's, it's actually disturbing to hear that, where certain files are being put aside. Uh, these ones are going to be investigated. Uh, it's common knowledge, mm -hmm. but nothing is happening. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm saying is incompetency is the, 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 the basic reason why we are where we are currently. Mm -hmm. Incompetency because incompetency also leads to corruption. And, um, and, and greed. People are so greedy, you know, they are prepared to steal the food or the mouse or the, of anybody around them as long as they get rich. And, and, and there's, there's some, I'm, I'm worried about what, what we are teaching our children and grandchildren. The example that we set for them, uh, not to work hard for your money and to build up something, but to get involved, get yeah. yourself good contacts, you know, so that you can get involved in contracts and, and tender so that you can get a lot of money and you can get it overnight, you know, and then you'll find, buy a new car, buy a new watch, point to choose. Um, and and then you're fine, but yeah. but this is not the culture that we are cultivating in this country is wrong, mm -hmm. and um, and it starts at the top. You cannot blame the people at the bottom. It starts at the top, and if you want to rectify it, then you must start from the top. And if ministers are corrupt, they must be taken to court and, if necessary, going to jail. Yeah, you you you've you've clearly got. A picture which you've ca carved out as into where the problem is the incompetence like you said the ministers and so on but i didn't hear you speaking of the opposition parties which ought to keep the ruling party on its feet as far as the management and distribution of resources is concerned you i think you're correct in a certain in a certain way but but i can tell you that uh, the opposition i think i've always try to play a, a role, but they are just being disregarded. Uh, in Parliament, if you listen to the speeches, uh, it's as if the ruling party don't want, and I mean, I had, I had practical experience once when I spoke to a minister and he said to me, but please don't just, don't uh, mention it in Parliament. It had to do with the fact that I said, uh, you know, when we had all these accidents and big trucks uh, over weekends, and I said to him that I think what we need to do, or what they need to do, is to is to uh, <coughs> put in regulations that will prevent those 
trucks from driving uh, on the on the roads from Friday 12 o'clock to Friday uh, midnight and Sunday 12 o'clock to Sunday midnight so that at least your roads are open when people go on weekends up mm -hmm. to the north and wherever. And we discussed it. He said to me, it's a very, very good idea, but I must please not mention it in the parliament. It mustn't come from me. Mm -hmm. So I kept quiet, but nothing happened. And I think this is what, what is going on. And the moment you start to, to mention many of these things, uh, it's as if the ruling party take it personally. Mm -hmm. They don't listen to what you say and, and, and say, but let us do it. Also in the standing committees. I mean, how many issues have been referred to the standing committees? Nothing came from it. Because they always think that they need to win everything. They need, if there's a discussion in the standing committee and there's a difference of opinion, then uh, the ruling party members, they must, what they want must happen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're not always the sharpest tools in the, <laughs> in the drawer, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's difficult. But I think, yeah. I think the opposition really try the level best to, um, to, to make uh, a positive contribution. Mm -hmm. But what can they talk about? They mm -hmm. can only talk about the problems. We can, that is what is worrying and that is what is affecting our people. Uh, the problems. Now, if you talk about the problems and you say you're negative, I mean, you just criticize and yeah. so it's, it's, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the reason why I asked you that question is because we've seen in recent years the emergence of uh, civil society groups and the independent <coughs> candidate ph phenomena. You've seen the role and the impact they've had. Why is it that the opposition parties couldn't reach those heights over the years? What is the stumbling block? I think there can be quite a number of reasons. The one is that our elections have been rigged from independence. <laughs> uh, and I can only speak for, for us. Yeah. Uh, I know what the supporters at the Republican Party have in Namibia, has in Namibia. So uh, you don't get the representation in Parliament that you're supposed to have. Uh, and, and I think people, people know that. But I think what happened lately was, yeah, and then <clears throat> If you look at Swapo, I mean, <clears throat> the people supporting Swapo, that is for them, that was a religion. You know, they grew up with that. Mm -hmm. um, I speak to, to many of them. I've got a, a lot of friends in Swapo and also, yeah, politicians, but also in the private sector. Yeah. For them to change poli uh, parties <laughs> is like committing <laughs> treason. <laughs> so whether they agree or not, mm -hmm they will remain and it's like with all respect with uh, the Herrera speaking community you know Nudo uh, and the Damara speaking community uh, their party UDF so that was that was uh, also a culture that was that was not not good you know it's not that when people when people are unhappy that they are looking for another vehicle no, it could be that they that they were of the opinion that uh, let's take the Republican Party. <coughs> Inc. Much is not a good president. He hasn't got the vision uh, to take us forward and what, what, what. So that could be, that could be possible. Sure. Um, but uh, I, think, I think the biggest problem lied with the fact that, that political parties, be people belong to political parties for traditional region, uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. And what happened, I think, uh, last year, <clears throat> in 2019 was in all of a sudden something happened and there was a new let's call it a kid he's not a kid mm -hmm. a person on the block um, with um, making all the right noises and I think it was easier for the people then and also be because uh, he was from the from the right community mm -hmm. uh, up north and uh, and that made it easier for people to to say, right, let's let's join and let us let us support, which was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And even this year, with a with a last year, twenty twenty, with the regional local government elections. Um, so I think that was that was one of the reasons why why that became successful. And social so uh, society is is important. It is very 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 important. So I I'm 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 excited. I mean, we didn't. The Republican Party did not do well in this uh, past elections and uh, I don't want to sound as if I'm just going to criticize the EC and so but they were I mean we had a big meeting in Katima Mililu and then mm -hmm. we got 27 votes so <laughs> what the hell is going on here 
But, uh, but the point that I'm trying to make, I think the opposition as a whole did well. Mm -hmm. um, and at least now uh, the opposition has got an opportunity to show the people. And they have a very big responsibility. Always criticizing local authorities, now they no, are yeah. in charge. Mm -hmm. And now they must perform and, and, and put their money where their mouth is. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are in the same position in, in places like in East Bay and so on and so forth. But so I think hopefully the opposition can show now that they can do the job. And yeah. up come this 2024 election, there will be there will be serious problems for the ruling party. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they are in the position now where I don't think they've got any plans anymore. What mm -hmm. what to do to 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 convince the people to to support them? But what if what if the opposition parties who are running local authorities? don't deliver as promised, do you think people will revert back and say, ah, maybe I made a mistake leaving Swap, or let me just go back? It could be. It could be, but I think, I think uh, they will be stupid. <laughs> uh, the opposition parties will be absolutely stupid if they really don't take this opportunity. Because they, we, we were all talking about what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. We know, and, and we say we know, and we do know. Now do it. Yeah. Um, it's not so difficult, but do it. And if they can't do it, then it's the opposition's own fault. Yeah. If, if, if they're going to fail and the people decide to revert back to Swap or whichever party they mm -hmm. are from. And, uh, but I think, I, I'm, you know, when I'm saying this, and any party, any political party, cannot remain in power forever. It is, it is just not, it mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Um, it's, it's uh, except for places like Zimbabwe, <laughs> and, you know, where you have uh, uh, somebody that's president for life and so on. But normally, you know, people need to be educated in a way and become, uh, yeah, become educated in such a way that, that they will decide. Yeah. You disappoint me, so I'm going to support that. Mm -hmm. And we need to get to that point. I think it started two years ago, mm -hmm. which I think is very positive. Uh, so. People always ask me, uh, what, what, what is my, my view of, of the future for Namibia? I'm very optimistic. I'm really very optimistic, despite all the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. I'm really very optimistic and very positive. We've got the people. We've got the, the, the best, I, I really want to say the best people in Africa. Um, friendly, helpful, and mostly hardworking. Mm -hmm. um, intelligent, and I'm not talking about whites, I'm talking about our black people. They can do anything, and they can, they can be trained to do anything. So we've got the people, we've got the country, we've got this, the space, we've got the attraction uh, for, for, for tourism mm -hmm. uh, that people love. Uh, we've got everything, we've got the mines, the fishing, and if we can just get that right and get corruption rooted out, this country, it, it, we, it should have happened already, but this country can really become the jewel of Africa. Yeah. It is, it's got all the potential to do it. So I think the fact that it changed on the political scene in the last two years is, is for me, a change in the right direction mm -hmm. for us to get to the point where we can really do something correct. And, and, but it must go down to the grassroots level. They must benefit. Yeah. We cannot have shacks all over the place. We cannot have unemployment. Uh, at the levels that we have currently, mm -hmm. we, that have, that that's got to change, and 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 this is this is the challenge that we have. Yeah. But I mean, there's not rocket science to 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 sort that out. It can be done, but then the people up in government must just be mm -hmm. wide awake and have the political balls to do it. Yeah. Well, we can't speak development and growth without speaking of SOEs, mm. which are basically the vehicles of because government can't enter into certain spaces itself, you've got these entities. It seems they are currently in shambles. Well, currently, they've been in shambles for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I read somewhere, was it today or yesterday, that uh, they're talking about 97 SOEs that we have. Uh, I think that's about uh, 19 or if it's 97, then it must be about 87 too many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the government has shown that they cannot run private, they cannot run a business. They cannot run the f affairs of the country. 
They cannot run our finances. They cannot run SOEs. Uh, I would challenge you to tell me of one SOE that's a success. Mm -hmm. One in 97. Where there's not corruption, where there's not unauthorized spending, where there's no problems. Uh, SOEs, like the Reds, uh, and I don't want to go into detail, but mm -hmm. there are so many of them that has been created. One, one, one got the feeling that they just want to create something for somebody to be the chief MD or, or CEO and mm -hmm. then uh, have his, his people around him, big officers, serious salaries and perks and uh, uh, you know all that. Mm -hmm. So, and when they fail, nothing has been done about it. We can talk about it. We, we, I mentioned Agriba's death just now. Um, Namta, not Namta. Namta. Um, supposed to do the, 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 the distribution of the food that was supposed to come to them via okay. Agribus Dev. Amta. Amta. Um, in Namibia. <laughs> um, <laughs> we can carry on mm -hmm. and on and on and on. All of them is just a disaster. And it's because the top structure and the leadership in the country is not there and it's not serious to make sure that people are being appointed if they want to create those entities, yeah. then at least make sure that you appoint the person um, that's properly qualified to do the job. Not mm. your friend, yeah. not your family friend or your family or whatever, but the person who can do the job. And it has not been, ha uh, been happening for 10, 15, 20 years. So are we surprised that this is such a disaster? No, it's not. <laughs> because yeah. and all that most of these people do is to enrich themselves. And once again, at the cost of the people who are suffering. Yeah. Give us your party's official position on cabinet's plan to liquidate the national airline. <coughs> I think there's a misconception in Namibia about, if I read in the newspapers lately, mm -hmm. the last two weeks, what's, what's been said and in what, on WhatsApp messages and so on and so forth, how all of a sudden people are very unhappy about the fact that people at Enemobile are going to be laid off and the uh, airline be liquidated. So, I mean, that should have happened a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, Enemobile was never run the way it should have been run. Never. Um, come back, incompetent people appointed as the CEOs in these, as, as the top structure of Enemobile. Mm -hmm. Incompetent, nothing else. Um, and it's a sof sophisticated entity. Mm -hmm. Airline business. It's not everybody's, everybody's business to run. It is very, very sophisticated. I can tell you that I've been, it is uh, very quickly, uh, when President Muhammad was, uh, was in, uh, president, he invited me and it happened, I think, well, basically every time I went to him. Mm -hmm. You may recall that uh, many years ago I was in a, a serious, I don't want to say a fight, disagreement with, with Air Namibia, especially about this. And uh, I think it was the time that Cosmos Igumbu was there, or the person before mm -hmm. him. And I was attacked viciously about my comments about the fact that Air Namibia is, is, is uh, the management is incompetent. And I had a lot of info uh, from uh, cabin staff, from pilots, and, uh, and then I would discuss it with President Puamba. It, it actually got to the point where, you know, you, you go to him at State House and you sit down and the media is there and mm -hmm. introduce and thank you very much for coming. And I think we were going to have a very fruitful discussion, which I think he was honest. Yeah. Um, and then the media would leave and then he sat there with the people who take the minutes. And then he will start and then he will say, honorable uh, much. <coughs> Uh, let's start to talk business. Uh, you say, I, I assume the first uh, point of your agenda is in Namibia. <laughs> Every time. Yeah. And we discussed it. And I'm not saying anything ag against uh, President Poamba. You know, uh, something else happened after that. Um, where I was uh, informed about a pilot that was flying for Namibia that was totally incompetent. Totally unqualified. 
He was flying the Airbus overseas. He was a captain um, from somewhere in Africa, Nigeria or Ethiopia okay. or wherever. Now, this guy, I don't know how he was appointed, because if you look at all the reports of the people that interviewed him, I mean, they actually told him in his face that he should look for another job opportunity, not yeah. fly aircraft. Yeah. The long and the short of the story is that there were three incidents overseas, Katwijk and Frankfurt. Katwijk, there was two, Frankfurt. <coughs> so I went to the president and I also went to uh, Prime Minister of the time, um, Lars Angula. And I said to them, please take that guy off, having retested at a reputable firm or company in South Africa that because they are there, just make sure that he can do it. Because I was told by the cabin staff that he would drink whiskey while he was flying and stuff like that, you know, and that is totally prohibited. Mm -hmm. But not only that, he was harassing the cabin staff. They laid a complaint at HR. Mm -hmm. That file disappeared. Yeah. Um, so, in the end, what happened was, and I said to President Poamba at the time, I said to him, if something happened and that and people are killed when this guy is going to, and he is going to be responsible for that, I will go to the media and I will say to them that I've told you. Yeah. So then you must take responsibility. And in the end, what happened was. Uh, he mentioned, <coughs> and also Nas and Gula mentioned something, oh, they cannot interfere this, this. But, so I was so upset, I went to see uh, Danny Small, the state, uh, what do you call the state advocate, whatever. And I said, I asked him, what can I do? He said to me, you can lay a charge yourself as an individual. As a, uh, so mm -hmm. I did it. Yeah. That file got lost. <laughs> And I gave them numbers. I had interviews with uh, instructors from overseas, from Germany. Mm -hmm. And one day, you may recall, the Airbus came in one morning early from overseas and it almost missed the runway. It, it, it flew those, uh, those uh, landing lights to pieces mm -hmm. and almost. And if it, if it has left the runway, it was just after rain season that the, 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 the ground around the runway was soaked. If he would have left the runway at that speed, he would have he would have killed people. That was around about six o'clock, eight o'clock, when the new staff of the air traffic controllers came onto duty. Uh, everything was cleaned up, and there was nothing. Not a report. Air Namibia didn't say anything. It took some time for the for uh, NAC yeah. to tell Air Namibia to fire that guy, or they will revoke the license. And, uh, and he did it, they did it, but he was sitting at home for, I think, two years, earning a salary, mm -hmm. without disciplinary hearing and all that. No, why? Because he, he had connections. That was why he was <laughs> flying. Yeah. So all these things happen, but let's come to Enemabia now, today. Um, when I was in Parliament, I mean, I can remember every year with a budget debate, we were talking and fighting about the contribution uh, that was being made to Air Namibia. 700 million, 850 million, 680 million. And every time we were told, no, no, don't worry. Um, and Honorable Sara Kongola Amatila was the Minister of Finance at the time. And then she would say, but I mean, things are not going right, but we've got a turnaround plan. There is a turnaround plan. Now, I think there was about five turnaround plans when I was in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Every time, looking for excuses. But the, the, the most important thing is that people were appointed. When I was with, a, with President Buamba, I said to him at the time when somebody was, was uh, left, and I think it was Cosmos Gumbu, then I said to him, Mr. President, do what British Airways did. They went into the market and they got the best guy. They paid him millions and he got it right. And I said to him, do that, you will save in the end. Yeah. And it wasn't done. And then you know who was appointed after that. Uh, they were totally unqualified, totally incompetent. And mm -hmm. the airline was losing money. And it, it should have been closed at that stage already. Now we are complaining about 600 employees that's going to be, that's going to be mm -hmm. retrenched. But what about the 8 billion that NMB received up to now? That 8 billion was supposed and not wasted 
you know how many grassroots people and people who's unemployed could have been could have been employed could have been helped with that money now we are worried about 600 people i'm sorry for them because it's not their fault yeah. it's the management that that was uh, all these years totally incompetent as and also the board of directors they this is the other problem that we have the the the, the, the SOE's boards of directors they don't know their fiduciary responsibility okay. And I think this is the first thing that needs to be done in future is, it should have been done, is to explain to them what is your responsibility as a director. You cannot just sit there and, and claim director's fees and setting fees. Mm -hmm. You've got a certain responsibility and it was their responsibility to see that this guy is not doing his job. Whoever, and that in those days the Minister of Finance was a caretaking minister, yeah. said to the minister, you must fire this guy or this girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm feeling bad. I'm feel but where did the problem start? The problem started with Minister Sara, Ogungola mm -hmm. Omadila, when those two airbuses were leased. At the time, it was common knowledge that it was the most important lease contract in the world. Why? And she signed it off. Now, I, I, if I remember correctly, she mentioned at some stage, ah, but. Uh, she didn't uh, focus properly yeah. when she said, what? How can you sign a lease for two airbuses at the cost of millions and hundreds of millions of dollars and you don't focus on what you're signing? That is mm -hmm. nonsense. But be that as it may, why was it not properly investigated? And, and today we sit with that. Now, to get out of that contract is going to cost the airline a few billion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is not the employees who are responsible for that, the grassroots or the, the, except for the management. But the management of NMB and the boards and the ministers must take full responsibility for what's going on. Mm -hmm. But it must be liquidated. Yeah. We cannot afford to carry on like this. Wha what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are we going to pay seven, eight billion <coughs> to clear the debt and then carry on like we carried on in a few years time we have to pay another seven billion and another seven billion at some yeah. stage we must get to the point where we say stop it mm -hmm. yeah um as we wind up just lastly from you, you you've spoken extensively about <coughs> the lack of leadership lending us where we are today maybe just your final word as in a word of advice perhaps to the leadership of the country in terms of turning things around I think it will be <laughs> <coughs> quite arrogant f for me to <laughs> for me to comment on that. Uh -huh. um, to be quite honest, I don't think the current leadership is serious uh, for whatever reason. It is it is something that boggles my mind. If you look at this COVID <coughs> fiasco that we are currently. Mm -hmm. Uh, involved with and uh, and the regulations that was uh, issued. Uh, I don't know whether somebody is. Are they are they are they are they led by the noses by the World Health Organization or what is going on here? <laughs> I mean, somebody must be sensible enough to say, listen, guys, we cannot do this. We cannot, but at least we can do that. We allowed companies. How many companies to go bankrupt? And that's fine. But. But we, we, we are hell-bent to get a vaccine that is untested, that is, you know, and while there are other medicine, hydroxychloroquine, what, Invermectin. Invermectin. It has been proven you can go into the internet and it is not fools talking about this. It is doctors, specialists, scientists who have done their own research on Medic, uh, uh, medicine that is available already, not something that need to be created yeah. as a new vaccine that need to be developed. And it's, it's working. Now, why on earth are, is the government not saying to the people, listen, it does have very little, if any, side effects. You cannot overdose. Take this stuff. Let's see if it works. No. Ban it. Why? Because the World Health Organization has got another agenda. And there are so many things running around and going around Mm -hmm. about this COVID thing. So what I'm saying is, this worries me. The current leadership, they cannot come out and say, and, 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 and say, but we are doing this 
for this and this and this reason because we've done our research. They just say research has been done. And now all of a sudden that the people say that it, this, this vaccine can cause infertility, it mm -hmm. can cause this, that, that, that. We've paid a lot of money already. I will not take that vaccine. Nobody is going to force me to take that vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will, I will honestly, I will go as far as I can to encourage people not to do it because it's untested. It, uh, they said yeah. they, they used it in, was it in the United Kingdom? Uh, and 67% of the people were either very negatively affected or uh, frontline workers and healthcare workers and so on and so forth. It should be, the, 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 the success rate should be 99% for it to work. We had flu for how many years and they could never find a vaccine to curb yeah. flu. Now they w came up with a vaccine for a, a serious, I'm, I'm not saying COVID is not serious, it is very serious. But how the hell can you come now within months, eight months with a new vaccine and then all of a sudden it has been developed all over the world, right. Russia and France and USA and, and uh, What's going on? <laughs> so what I'm saying is, to answer your question, this makes me worry a lot. To say that, is this the leadership in the country that allow this to happen to our people? We have to go to be tested for, for COVID, and mm -hmm. it cost us $850. Millions have been paid by our people to be tested, uh, either to go to, to, to work or to travel or to do this or that. And every time you have got to fork out $850. Now, it's not falling from the sky. People need to take it from their pockets. Yeah. So, so I've got a, a serious problem with the leadership. And I'll say it to them. I'll say it to them. I'm not scared to say it to them. They must explain it to the people. But, 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 but when somebody come up, like Leon Euster and, and Shimi, uh, Honorable Shimi, mm -hmm. They wouldn't have just got up one morning and say, we must close Edinburgh. No. I know because I've been coming for, with this for a long time. Uh, they've done their research. They've looked at every possible way what can be done. And if they yeah. say this is the only way, and they will explain it to you. And I, th I think they've done it. Yeah. Then we're not happy with that. But when the president and the minister of health and social services come and say, you must take this vaccine, you must go to bed at 8 o'clock, you can't rise before, or can't start driving before 5 o'clock, you must uh, uh, administer social distancing, you must wear a mask, you must do this, you must do this, and we, we, we sit there like ducks, and we've been led by our noses, and we accept it. And the, and the social society, I tell you, must also stand up against this nonsense, yeah. to say, this is enough, this is enough. I think our constitution, the Namibian constitution, has been violated so many times with this, with what has happened with this uh, COVID mm -hmm. uh, regulation and so on. So I, I, it'll be arrogant for me to say yeah. uh, what they need to do. I think they just need to become honest okay. and serious and, 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 and really show the people of the country that what they are doing is for the, is for the interest of the people on the ground level. Okay. Mr. Mash, thank you for coming through. <laughs> it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All the best.